Welcome to ZZ Talk with Zeno. And Zeus. Uh, today is episode seven. Um, not really a milestone episode, but I just like to say it like that. Um, lucky number seven. Lucky number seven. There you go. There's something there. Um, Our technical issues haven't been lucky, but lucky number seven. Yeah, actually, we, we meant to start recording like 80 minutes ago, and <laughs> a lot of stuff just went wrong. And that's why my background is different. I'm in my basement right now. Uh, as Zeus mentioned, as Zeus told me before we started recording, it definitely looks like a bachelor pad because there's like nothing there but the essentials. There's a couch, there's a TV over there. But that's the most it. important part of the TV, yeah. Right. So uh, today uh, we're going to do what we normally do, which is our uh, top five. Uh, we're starting off with our top five favorite songs that are older than us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, it was uh, songs of the 80s at first um, to um, honor. The life of Eddie Van Halen, uh, who just passed away yesterday. Um, and Johnny Nash. And Johnny Nash. Johnny Nash, and if you, said? Johnny Nash. And if you guys don't know who Johnny Nash is, he's a song, Can You? I Can See Clearly Now. Pretty sure we've heard it on like a bunch of TV shows, a bunch of movies. So just to honor them, they passed away. So this is for them. Top fives and all that good stuff. Fantastic voice, Zeus. Um, Thank you. So, so yeah, we're going to do top five um, golden oldies, if you will. Um, and then um, we're going to go right into our entertainment section. Uh, there's a few movies that have been postponed, a few big blockbuster movies, and we're going to yeah. talk about that. Um, and then we're going to dive into our sports section. We're going to talk about the MLB playoffs, um, how the NFL handled the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and uh, yeah. how it threatened week four and uh, what effect that's going to have on week five. And then uh, we're going to dive into our politics section, talk about a couple of those debates that we had in last episode's top five, uh, as well as the VP debate that's going to be happening tonight. Uh, and then a couple of other politics issues that we'll, we'll get to once, uh, once we're on that subject. So Zeus, um, do you have any corrections? Uh, no, no corrections, not today. Okay. Yeah, uh, we, we stay pretty perfect, except today when I was watching um, the Braves beat the Marlins in game two, uh, I did notice that I got one thing wrong when we were talking last week, or I guess in this case, five days ago. Oh, um, right, so quickly, this yeah. is corrections. Right, right, right. Yes, corrections. Um, I said to Zeus last time that there are 25 players on the MLB playoff roster. That is incorrect. It is 40, unless my count is wrong, in which case I'll do a corrections in week eight. Uh, but... <laughs> In episode eight, sorry, but I believe it's forty players for the um, for the playoff roster. Yeah, and that's all I have for corrections. Um, so, how many are there again? Uh, there are 40, 40 players in the playoff roster. I believe when I said it, I said there were forty in the regular season, and then they go to twenty five. Um, I know now that there's forty in the playoffs. I don't know if there's twenty five in the regular season. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, I, I just didn't feel like checking it, so yeah. But I, I know I was wrong about the twenty-five part. All right, top five songs of the eighties and older. Our golden oldies. Uh, do you want to kick it off? I'll kick it off real quick. Just let me know if you have any honorable mentions. I want to throw out some quick honorable mentions, just because honestly, these all of these were so close to be. If we had a top ten, these, uh, this would have been in my top ten, right? Because these are just songs up that I just love so bob sager's turn the page i'm sure a lot of people have heard the metallica version both of those versions are pretty awesome um you know that song no i'll link it um because I, <laughs> I won't sing it because i don't want people to be thinking oh he needs to go on the voice and you know drop drop zeno go to on the voice or something like that yeah, and, you, know, you know become a, i don't want to do that um, you I'm just started man <laughs> right <laughs> second one another one george michael's careless whisper okay the band Seether has an amazing cover of that one, too. Again, I'll, I'll throw them on there. I'll link them on there uh, on the comment page. Uh, bon Jovi's Runaway. So if anybody has seen Bumblebee, they, they've heard this song um, in one of the montages. I try to remind Zeno of it, but he doesn't really remember because he's only seen – he's done a travesty. He's only seen Bumblebee one time. He should honestly watch Bumblebee a few more times. It's a, I think it's, like, the best Transformer movie out of all of them, to tell you the truth. Not a um, bar. <laughs> <laughs> And, that's a, and it's funny that the one that's the best one happens to not be directed by Michael Bay. But anyways, we're not in the, we're not in the, pop, we're not in the movie section um, right now. So we can't talk about that. But, uh, and then lastly, my other honorable mention, 
Gloria Gaynor's I Will Survive. Just because okay. that's just one of those. Gotta love those. Songs. Anyways, you have any honorable mentions? I don't have any honorable mentions. I mean, I have a lot of oldies, but um, no, I, I I just have five, really. All right, um, go to your first five, then. All right, number five. Um, this is a, a favorite of anyone who's watched uh, Remember the Titans. Ain't No Mountain High Enough no. by uh, Marvin Gaye. And, oh, no, I forgot her name. Tammy. You know what's funny? I, 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 knew, I used to know her name off the bat. Cause yeah. Have you ever heard her story? I, I I know she died young, right? But. She did. So she uh, she actually she coll- so it was Tammy Terrell. Tammy Terrell. Um, so she and you know uh, her and Marvin Gaye, Marvin Gaye called her his singing soulmate, hmm. uh, if I don't if I don't recall. But she was married to somebody somebody big. I forgot his name though. But he used to be abusive to her, hmm. and so some people credit her um, her having a tumor, which is what she died of. Oh no. Uh, they credit to to him beating her a lot of times uh do they have the name on here of course they don't have the name on. but anyways um but he she actually they were performing when she collapsed and he she collapsed in his arms and they said that that's what like messed him up and made him go go away and become come back with the whole what's going on kind of thing yeah. so anyways i just thought it was a kind of interesting thing well, to know but our know. top five started off with a dark turn can you, <laughs> can you pep us up with uh with your number five please <laughs> Oh my bad. And by the way, she was in a, actually uh, she was in an abusive relationship with James Brown. Really? Yeah, but I don't think that was it. I don't think it was him. Uh, I think it was David Ruffin that she was actually was oh, actually Lord. also her husband too. I don't know. Yeah, might, that might have to that'll be a correction once I once I know for sure. But anyways, let's uh, go. Well, you know what? This one dark turn goes into another kind of a dark song because I've heard stories about the the breakdown of the song because it's supposed to be about like. Um, so I get the shining kind of um like like whenever i'm seeing the song played out in my head i'm thinking of the shining for some reason okay because but a lot of people say because it's about drug addict drug addiction or something like that hotel california by the eagles oh okay yeah i think i've done that in karaoke before i'm sure you have it's a great song it's a bad but some people say if you really listen to it it's about like um it's it's about being in hell oh wow okay (laughs) california is hell Uh, (laughs) Hotel California. Well, I mean, with the wildfires. Yeah, Yeah, that's true. Yeah. My number four is Man in the Mirror by Michael Jackson. You know, we've spoken um, a bit before, I think it was during our uh, Mulan Controversies episode, about being able to separate um, potentially bad stuff from the art. And uh, Michael Jackson is one of those that I've really had... um, trouble with that like oh there's all these allegations but his music is so good um man in the mirror is one of those really good songs of his um you know obviously it has a a litany of them human nature bad all that stuff but man in the mirror was my pick for number four um i feel like if you were to take away his old discography and only leave one you gotta leave that one stands the test of time so i'll disagree with you later on today okay uh in regards to uh, your top five. If there's one song of his, yeah, that yeah. I, I had to pick. But but that's not yet. Number four for me is Steve Nicks, Edge of Seventeen. Okay. I don't Have know you've ever that, seen... I don't know that one is. <sighs> Do I need to sing it? Sure, yeah, please. No, no, hold on. I can't think of the but the part goes, ooh, ooh, ooh. What? <laughs> <laughs> Those are the lyrics? <laughs> no, no, that's just the part. That's like one of the big parts that I remember of the song. But because um, honestly, it's like a very, it's a hard song. If you can sing that, to me, you're a talented ass singer. Okay. The, there's a there's a singer who sung it on The Voice, and I wanted her to win after hearing that song. And that's kind of what made me like the song again. But it's called Edge of 17 by Steve Nicks. I'll, again, I'll try to link them all on our um on our on the comment section just so that way you can you can hear them and know mm-hmm. and you know educate yourself it would be uh, Zeus, Zeus Zapata right Zeus Zapata because I'm still ZZ even by myself okay yeah um, <laughs> that's my number four cool number three is um living on the prayer <coughs> by Bon Jovi I love this song this one is definitely a karaoke song for me I believe the first time I actually like really like listened to it and heard it was um, Guitar Hero. We used to have Guitar Hero in our four-person apartment in Athens, mm-hmm. and um, my buddy Omar was on the guitar, 
and uh, I was on the vocals. And uh, Living on a Prayer became one of my favorites. I've always liked Bon Jovi, but I'd never been accustomed. I'd never been acquainted with this song until then. So uh, that's my number three. Hmm. You know, it's funny. All my karaoke songs are like way like later, like two thousands maybe. You're but you go you go old school. You're an old soul there, man. You're an old soul. So here is my number three. My disagreement in regards to Man in the Mirror. My the one song that for me. If I had to choose one song of Michael Jackson this day, it would be Librarian Girl. Really? I like I, the song, but it's never really love, cracked my... Oh, man. No, I love that song. Like, okay. I just... I got I got his greatest hits at one point, and that song is actually the reason I ended up getting... And that was not from Thriller. That one's actually from... I think his best album is not Thriller. I think his best album is Bad. Mm-hmm. I've, 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 I've heard that argument be made, too, so... Just because, like, um, honestly, the only song, there's only, like, maybe two or three songs on, on Bad that I, I might skip. But, I, I mean, I, I'm thrilled that I kind of skip the hymn with Paul McCartney. I'm not a huge fan of that song. I'll listen to it, but I'm not a huge fan. I'm, and I know a lot of people are going to be, like, blasting me. Maybe we'll get some unsub- some people unsubscribed because of that. But <laughs> <laughs> Because that'll be the outrage, not all the other crap we talk about. You know, but, if we get, um, technically, if we get 2% of our subscribers unsubscribed, We've lost one subscriber. So, <laughs> <laughs> so please like and subscribe so we can grow our subscribership. And it's not just one that we lose with 2%. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We're trying to make it where we don't have to work anymore. We just do this all day. And we know you love you. We right. you guys love to hear your stuff. So right. that's my, no, that's my number three. Your number two. My number two is One on One by Hall and Oates. Um, anyone who knows me or who's known me for a while knows that Hall and Oates is probably my favorite duo of all time. I honestly can't even think of another duo. Mm. <laughs> That's how much I like mm. all of those. Um, I don't know, man. Like, they've, they've got hits upon hits. This rich girl, um, I can't go for that. Man, Are they the Sound of Silence? Sound of Silence? Uh, I don't um, know. I don't know. Hello, but, um, darkness, my old friend. Is that them? No. Oh, no, no. That's not them. No. Um, <laughs> but, but Sandy, so they've, they've got all those hits, but one on one, it's just such a soulful, oh. soulful song, and um, not not to not to you know bring it to like or to degrade the topic, but for a white dude, um, Daryl Hall has one of the most soulful voices of anyone from his time period. He's just he was just that good. He's still alive. I'm not saying that he's dead, but um, when his voice is at its peak, Daryl Hall, top notch. So one on one. Yeah, that's my favorite Hall and Oates song. Actually, you know what? That's not. I don't think. I don't think you saying for a white dude actually is necessary. Honestly, because back in the day, a lot of white dudes had so much soul. Oh yeah, Michael McDonald. That's another one. Yeah, that him, him, and then also, uh, what's the one song? I, I forget, but there. I didn't know they were uh, in the night, in the city. Dun, 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 I know the song. Dun. I don't know who sang that. I forgot the name of the song. Uh, I'm gonna try to find it before and like correct it or whatever, yeah, just yeah. so I can know the, the name for sure. But yeah, that song is like that's what actually. It, if I had to remember the name, honestly, that's probably why it's not the top five because I just couldn't remember the name. And then you and I think the lines that I just said are completely wrong, anyways. Because every time <laughs> I try to type those in Google, it doesn't come up, and I don't know how to type in dum 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 into Google for they can you know pull it yeah. up, but. But yeah, old, old school white dudes like that's why I think Justin Timberlake gets a lot of uh, credit because just he's like a, he he, he back taps in the 80s, into that. Yeah, yeah, back in the eighties, he probably would have still been um been cool. So that's your number two. Speaking oh, sorry, and, um, speaking of Justin Timberlake, I also okay. I also used to like uh, the Bee Gees like a lot. Um, yeah, you know the Barry Gibb talk show on SNL. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Fallon and Justin Tim- yeah, Timberlake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> actually, um, I, yeah, I, I'm in agreement with you because actually one time I, um, so back in the day when, you know, you used to be able to get music, not, I don't do it anymore, but you used to be able to just get your free music. Lime Wire, I did like Aries. A, yeah, Morpheus was mine. Um, I used to do, I got a, like a BG mixtape. And by the way, real quickly, the one that's on the silence is actually Simon and Garfunkel. They're the really? Ones. So that's another duo for you there, sir. Okay. So anyways. I'm not, no, my number I'm not two. picking them. <laughs> <laughs> so my number two, actually, I'm going to get Zeno to decide this one for me because I really can't figure out. It's the same artist. 
but I can't figure out which one I like more because like Zeno, I didn't want to, because if we really did met multiple, the same artists multiple times, with you, it probably would have been, at this point, Michael it looks Jackson like it would have been and Hall and & Oates and Michael Jackson. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mike. Mine is Queen. I can't decide if it's Bohemian Rhapsody or Somebody to Love. So I'm going to let you decide for me on which one you think. Can you sing a bit of Somebody to Love? I don't... Somebody, somebody. That's all I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I know Bohemian Rhapsody more. Um, so that would be my pick. I actually don't know no. Somebody to Love. You've heard it. You've heard it. You just don't. Um, you just don't remember it off the top. Uh, and, and also, um, people, the reason why Zeus might sound like he's singing certain things off key, uh, it's not because he can't sing it on key. It's because we don't want to get a copyright strike. That is exactly why it has absolutely nothing to do with me not having. Because y'all in the shower, I'm the boss. Right. But uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so you say Bohemian Rhapsody. Just because you don't know the other one, I'll choose Bohemian Rhapsody, but Somebody to Love is honestly up there. If you've heard it... Put it in the you, comments, too. That I am. One. I'm going to put them all... I'm going to put all these in the comments. So my okay. comment is going to be, like, literally, like, 50 songs. Okay, uh, better for, be. For you, you I need to see all of them. <laughs> and I'm gonna, and since I don't know which Hall & Oates... I forget which Hall & Oates you pick. I'm probably going to put all I of picked them. one and one. Um, okay. But there's a ton like, of them. Yeah, I was going to do a bunch of them. So anyways, that, that's my number two. So real quickly, number one for you is... My number one, um, if, you, if you don't mind, I'm going to wax poetic about this a little bit. Um, it really is just one of the greatest songs I've ever written. Um, Papa Was a Rolling Stone by The Temptations. Um, the, this song is about six minutes long. And like the first two minutes of it is literally just instrumental. And it's like, it's, it's like, it's a very haunting song. It's like, don't, don't. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. The, and then it just keeps layering the instruments, right, for like two minutes straight. And it's just like... You, is, that why, is that why you said, oh, no, when I said that David uh, Ruffin was David married? Ruffin, yeah, because he's <laughs> my number one. Um, it just layers and layers. And then, yeah, it was the 3rd of September. And then just like going, oh, it's just, it's such a brilliant song. And I, I don't know who, who to credit with writing it. I know Sm Smokey Robinson um wrote tons of the music but i don't know who to give the ultimate credit to this song all i know is that um i like a lot of the temptations song uh, especially especially if you watch the temptations movie from the 90s um but this one okay hey yeah it's still recording anyway so hold on i don't know where you left off so let me do is that why so when i mentioned david ruffin is that why you said, oh, no? Yes. <laughs> so, um, and there was a technical issue, if you guys are wondering why I'm repeating certain things. I probably will cut it down. But anyway, um, what I was saying is that it, after those two minutes of, like, instrumentals, and then it's, like, layering all those, it, it's layering the different sounds, right? And the temptations, you know, you've got your uh, baritone, which is, um, oh, no, I can't remember any of the names now, but um, <laughs> the guy with, like, the really low voice, you have David Ruffin, who was, like, the leader, you know, it's David Ruffin and the Temptations, um, yeah. and then, you know, um, Eddie Kendrick to the falsetto, it just layered so perfectly, it's one of the best put-together songs. The beginning of that song, is that the same beat that um, Bruno Mars did for um, Funk You Up? No, because it just sounded, no, the way you no, said it no, made it sound, no. I got it. So I need you to link in the comment sections the songs. Yeah. So that way yeah, I'll yeah. know. It's, all... it's one of those you just gotta you gotta sit through and let it play out. It's you know how Zeus is drinking, oh, I don't know what that is, whiskey right now. You gotta no, like just sir. what is it? Bourbon. 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 Classic classy homie. So <laughs> you gotta sit down, sip a bourbon, and then listen to how this dude's dad was a complete deadbeat. Uh <laughs> it's it's brilliant. So yeah, that's my number one song. All right. So my number one is an artist that you've already mentioned, which ties into David Ruffin, Marvin Gaye. Marvin Gaye's Come Get to This. Come Get to This. Okay. See, this, this is the thing, though. I, I have the songs that you don't even... Yeah, I mean, songs that are, like, obscure to me. Uh, look, I am a... I like to jump, go into, like, the bins. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like just listen to, like, as many, like... 
songs that I can from different artists. And then yeah. there's just some some songs that um that what's it called? Um that just get to me, but uh how does that song go? No. Uh, uh dang, I'm gonna have to listen. Honestly, it's I because I don't want to butcher it. Honestly, I will butcher it and I can't play it because even though we're not making any money off of this, we don't want to do any copyright. I, I hope I don't get a copyright strike for saying it was the third of September. I mean, I don't know if I hit it that well. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, so remind me again, what, what was the song called? Marvin Gaye's "Come Get to This." Come get to this. Okay, it's honestly my favorite Marvin Gaye song. If I'm listening to the out to to any of his songs. That one comes on, that song gets repeated like five times before I move on. I appreciate that you go deep into the discography to find your gem and not just rely on like what was the popular thing. Because a lot of these older songs that I know is just because they were popular and I, I hear them on the radio even today. But well, that's the thing that, that, I, that, that's hilarious to me because you know what? Um, <laughs> so funny thing happened. So, you know, back in the day, the low, 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 low was a... Yeah, um, it's a hip hop song. Go to the club, right? Have you seen it in the Kroger episodes lately? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So to me, it's hilarious because my daughter, just because you know that's just funny, because all of a sudden she was just like going get low, 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 and I'm cracking up because I'm over here like that's probably exactly how I was with like old school songs that were on the commercials. Yeah, because I didn't know like celebrate good celebrate good times come on mm -hmm. i didn't know that was an actual legit song i just thought it was like a pep rally song it was like yeah i did i honestly thought it was a pep rally sound commercial song it was just a jingle huh. but then later on you find out that no this is a legit song so it's funny to me because there's a lot of songs that they'll be hearing on the radio or on not on the radio on like commercials and they won't know the actual origins of the song so it's kind of like with you 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 probably originally didn't know the origins of these songs because you first heard them but then after a while they kind of start sticking to you so it's all good man you can you, you, you know yeah <laughs> you know you just put pandora on 80 songs or songs before i was born and these songs will come on and you'll and be good you'll discover some stuff that you don't usually you yeah. know learn yeah i mean not that anything's wrong with today's music you know everyone likes a little booty shaking but sometimes you want to go back to brass tacks 80s and i would hope i would hope you do because you're uh you, you know you're a bachelor's. You look at the, that looks like a dance hall behind you. You can turn that into there, a... Oh, there's space. Yeah. Pre-corona. So, Pre-corona. Pre-corona, you, you would have had our... You, I think you would have already had a housewarming jam party. Exactly. You're right. <laughs> All right, guys. That was our top five songs of the 80s and older.